Okay, um, today what we are going to do is this. We have a book by the name Writing for Computer Science uh, written by Justin Jobel. In this book, it's a specific book that discusses about research methodology, how to do research, and the examples taken in this book are mostly, if not all, computer science examples. So we are going to go into this book now. Chapter 1 is an introduction, uh, followed by he goes into different things in research. So here you will see chapter 1. In chapter 1, what are they saying? What is research? What can I do in terms of research? So when I write something, it is not like just making some noise around. It should be something useful for somebody. So basically, what is research is, a research is one where you have some idea, some new idea or something which already exists. You want to come up with some new results or some, um, uh, some advancement in the area. You're going to provide it to the people. That is research. That is the outcome of your research. And research has to go something rigorous, something intensive. You just cannot do it like one minute, one hour, one day, one month. Okay, do something and then say I'm done. Why? Because when you publish an article, it is going to stay in the journal for a long time. It will be read by many people. Many people are going to read this material. So it is going to be useful for the community, for the research community for a longer duration. So what is important is this. If I have some research which is substantially good, I should write it also properly. If I write it with lots of ambiguous information or if the information is missing, there is some omission there. In this situation, if things are missing, things are omitted, it will make it difficult for people to understand what is going on. Okay? So the paper will be like kind of useless, even though you have done something very useful. So what is important is, you have to do good research, you also have to provide the research, present the research in an appropriate way, in a proper way that people understand it. And when you make any results or anything, you should have proper justification, proper reasoning for it. So when you write papers, papers go into, what is the main motivation for writing papers? Well, papers will get published, many people will read it, you get some positions, you get some promotion, you get some awards, your H index, there are many things which should improve. Okay? So, if you make a paper which is wrong and everybody understands it, everybody sees that it's clearly mistake in that paper or it has lots of typographical or very basic errors, then it can hurt your career itself. Okay? It can spoil your career. So, writing is not something you do it, okay, with a paper my research ends. No. Writing is simply an integral part. You are actually moving to the next level. You, you do some research, you write something, after that people read it, they come up with something else on that line and they proceed. So the research keeps continuing. And when you write your paper, you have to write it simply, clearly, the clarity should be very clear. You might need to polish it many times, okay? One of the points when you write papers you need to keep in mind, you as an author have some good time to write the paper. You take a month or more than a month, okay? Maybe in months or years to do your research and publish. But what about the reviewer? Reviewer don't have this much time. Reviewer is going to read the paper maybe like some couple of hours or maybe a couple of days and he will finish the game. So he has very short time compared to your time. So write in such a way that he can understand correctly. He can get into the business rightly. So when you have to write, there are some basic things to do. You have to put things in a logical order. You have to have clear sentences. And you can have a list of checklists. Okay? Okay. In abstract, I need this. In introduction, I need this information. So all this should be there. When you start writing your very first paper, what you should do, you should have a checklist. Checklist, you can make it, it is available as well. The checklist says, in abstract, I look for this. In introduction, I look for this. 
and related work this methodology discussion research sections each section what i need for so after i write i will check whether i have these things or not if i have them okay done the content is there but how about the flow of the paper it should be smooth enough that anybody who reads can understand the paper properly so in research what happens is this you have some observation from which you have some hypothesis then you do some experimentation to prove your or to justify your results you have results then you do the uh, paper from the results and then it is reviewed by people okay so you have to go through a clear process you have to observe something how do you observe we will discuss that in a later stage simply observation comes by reading papers attending seminars talking to people who know the area they can give you okay i look like there is some problem or you work on an experiment you figure out there is some problem there why not i solve it so these things are possible and whenever you come up with some new contribution remember people really trust you they trust you it is all about ethics that you are publishing information truthfully you are not faking things around okay or you are not misguiding people around all right why you need referee because we have some review in paper because we want to make sure it is of some standard quality so when you design an article the author has to do few things number one he has to say what is his idea all about in terms of the community in terms of what is already existing and his idea can be represented as a theory or the or as an hypothesis how to write hypothesis we have a separate chapter chapter number 4 we will go to that and then you can say okay what is my contribution and prove your hypothesis or your theory proof may be mathematical proof can be using some experiment can be other ways so when you come to publication there are many kinds of publication you have books you have thesis your papers your many things so let us look at what are these things and how could they help us to write our research or to improve in our research books normally they don't contain results they are not experiments okay they have information collected this is like a place where you can read get some some concepts some general stuff there and if you have to look at it books are much more written properly than paper because books go through more rigorous review they check they check line by line they check many things there before a book is really printed by a reputable publisher okay it's not that easy though it takes time to publish so it's not about results it's about information just giving you some knowledge basic knowledge then if you go into the area of thesis or dissertation if you take a thesis it is exploring a single problem a single uh, um, research in depth it goes in five okay and please note this has been done by somebody for a degree maybe uh, phd masters whatever and it would have been a longer duration so a thesis is normally slightly longer than a paper it's longer as you know right he or she the person who is the author of it is a candidate of research and you can see in in american universities they use the word dissertation okay dissertation is something used for doctoral degree and thesis is used for master degree it doesn't matter as long as you look at a thesis or dissertation what you know is it is depth coverage of a single problem if you talk about papers what do they have in paper papers is all about original finding with appropriate literature review which is the bibliography there so a paper contains introduction some description of the research and discussion about the data and the methods then a bibliography bibliography okay so um, you can see this is what you call empirical studies it has through a process it goes and discuss the process gives you results analyze them all this this is empirical study and this is what that contains that should be the major part of the paper so may a research has been done they have looked at research they have gone through the paper has been published before publishing when they submit the paper reviewers look at it they have lots of common suggestions improved version comes as the final published paper if you talk about a conference paper conference paper is also 
uh, like journal paper, but it is normally a work in progress. So you will find mostly preliminary results. And conference papers are also reviewed, referred, right? but they have limitations on the number of pages and its review is not as intensive as a journal. And you can see there are papers like research paper where they have arguments, evidence, experiment, proof and also background knowledge. Remember when they do a research, when you do a research, do you put everything you did in the research in the paper? Not really. And do you write the paper in the same order you did your research? Not really as well. Sometimes you do some experiments, you figure out some hypothesis is wrong, some experiments are wrongly conducted. Maybe some noise has come into the data, this has spoiled the whole experiment or maybe some things are like failures of your experiment. These things you don't report in your paper. Why? It's not like hiding them, it's about you take this information, you correct your experiments, you redo the experiments, collect new sets of results, from there you write in your paper. So in any sense, any paper, any thesis is not like just describing how you do the research, how you got to the results. No. It's about something that adds value to the scientific knowledge. And when you talk about style of writing a paper, style is not how to write, it's about what to say. What you want to say in the paper? Because few minutes ago we did discuss, author has long time, but the reviewer don't have long time. Okay, he just takes couple of hours or couple of days to make a decision. He is only given a short time, like 15 days, one month duration, and he has his own job, so he has to find slots to review your paper. This is the deal. And if you go on, there are different types of papers. One is called review article. This is like a survey paper. What do you do? The person has not come up with his own contribution or his own research there. He is just collecting things what are around. Okay, it's an excellent source. When you read a survey paper, you get to know what is in the area of study what is available right now. And there is what is called case study, okay. So here you take a case, a scenario and then you take decisions based on it. You will go and analyze them and get results. For example, if you talk about social science or life sciences, that area, okay, not in our area, where they do case study, they do what is called descriptive explanatory analysis. They have some person, some people involved, some actions involved, and they do something and make decisions. So why you need to do explanatory? What is the use of explanatory? You have something and you want to know what caused this. What was the reason that this thing happened? To identify the reason, you do case study. Okay? Taking some subjects, taking some people into picture and doing some analysis there. Then you have what is called meta-analysis. Here you have hypothesis, which you are going to address them, which you are going to look at them in the same way, but this is a mathematical synthesis and you are doing from two different studies. Two people have tried to understand, tried to figure out, tried to answer the same hypothesis. Okay, two studies. You take them, you make a mathematical analysis. So this is mostly an analysis. So basically it's a statical analysis of large collection of data. You have lots of data available, lots of analysis available from which you are going to make an inference. Then you have what is called technical report. Technical report normally is available online from university websites or some researcher websites. Why you have technical report? Please note technical reports are normally not reviewed. They are not referred. They are just, the reader is preparing something, okay, and he wants it to be available for people to use it to proceed further. So this is why it is technical report, okay. So technical report comes available to the public quickly, to the researcher community quickly, then um, a paper. And people can publish uh, technical reports or they can wait to have um, what is called as a paper published. So there are two processes. One, you can just go and have a technical report uploaded on a website without being reviewed or you can go for submit a paper for review. It will take some, take some time, it will be reviewed and then um, you can get to a published paper. Sometimes they call it as 
a grade literature. Why these technical reports are called a grade literature? Because there is no review process. The author writes this, okay? And he is just freely distributing for people to look at it. Nobody really sit down and look at it carefully. The next one is about what is called as white paper. Uh, white paper, normally this is released by government or some business entities. It's again called as a gray literature. Why we call them as gray literature? Because these are um, not really under reviews or under process. So white paper is like uh, policies from the government, policies from uh, company or something, okay? So they do from these things. The question is, are we to refer these in our papers or not? I will answer them shortly. And then here are some examples of uh, what is a white paper meaning. Like, for example, they have a new tool, new uh, terminology, new process. They want to discuss it. They want to send it to the world so people can know what's happening around. There is one thing called position paper. This thing has become popular recently. Okay, let's say I have an idea. Not in the common research areas. I'm thinking of something new, a brand new research area, brand new topic. And it has not been discussed in the literature, it is brand new. So I want to make sure that I come and say, okay, this is my original area. This is my, this is an area I am initiating, I am starting. So we have what is called position paper. That is advantage here, that is disadvantage here. Position paper will tell you, this is something I want to do, but it will not have proper results. There will be no experimentation whatsoever. It is just a basic new idea. That's it. It's like a new idea. Um, some journals don't accept position paper. Even a good number of conferences don't accept position paper. But sometimes it might be necessary if you think that this is a research which is going to happen after two, three years of time. I'm coming with a, with a brand new concept, brand new area. Let's put it over so it will be under my name, for example. Okay? That is a position paper. Next one is called as a concept paper, position paper, concept paper are closely related, anyway. So here, in the case of concept paper, you want to write a full proposal, normally proposal for some uh, big elements like CAX project or some horizon, this kind of bigger uh, research proposal. Before submitting to a full proposal, I can come up with some key elements of my research which will give me what is the information, what are the objectives of my research, what will be the contributors, what is the budget, how much funding is needed and so on. So this is what I call a concept paper. You don't publish it basically. You distribute it to, to the researchers, to maybe the funding authority. It's normally two, three pages, not very big in size, okay, but the full proposal will be quite detailed. Then there is what is called a working paper which is a preliminary paper. Normally, preliminary papers are submitted to conferences, okay? Here, I have something where I have uh, preliminary results, not final results. So, my experiment is not really complete. I might need to fine-tune it somehow, right? And I need to enhance this so I can just submit to a good journal or whatever. They normally submit this to some conferences get some reviews, then enhance their experiment, enhance their work, and it could be published in a better venue. So again, we call it as gray literature because things are still unclear from these papers. So in the case of papers, it starts like this. You will have a manuscript, which is basically an initial text by the author. You write it, you submit to the publisher, then they look through. Then they make a review, they make conclusion about the paper. Finally, it has what is called camera ready version. Camera ready version is something which is to be published, okay? Which will be printed or published for. So question is, how do I collect papers? What are the primary sources of collecting papers? Primary source of getting some ideas. I can get some ideas from some other papers, from articles, from journals, and from so on. So when you take articles, you have literature review, you have methods and so on. So you can get all these things and from there you can get your new ideas. 
There are also some other sources by which you can get uh, research ideas. They are called the secondary sources. Like for example, it can be like some magazines, some websites, okay, some news reports, some textbook. You can also get information there. Why do you call these things as secondary? The reason is because primary ones is where the papers has been reviewed, it has gone through some process, it has much thorough, it's more thorough and more recent than the secondary source, that's all. And you have what is called as the tertiary source. Here you have some material and this is a good place where you can get some data, some overview about the topic. So normally encyclopedia, some databases, some handbooks, some manuals, this can help you. So not, there are issues like this. When you submit a paper, it can be rejected outright sometimes, immediately. Why? Because people really don't have time to read every line of your paper. They will read the abstract and the abstract is not written properly, it is vague or it is ambiguous. Moment the reviewer sees something is ambiguous, he will say bye. He will just say reject the paper. Some reviewers do spend some extra time going into the details and give you some comments. Most will just reject the paper straight. Uh, simply in an organization of a paper, right, you, you write the author name, don't put the qualification like prof so and so, doctor so and so, no. You just write simply the name of the person. Also, when you write title, okay, don't use abbreviation in your title. Don't say like a technique for this. Be specific in your title. So, when you write your paper, you are looking at the style of the paper. Remember, this book has lots of chapter, chapters on style. Style is not like, okay, if I tell you, this is how you should write, it is not a rule. It is just a suggestion. Style is always a text. I like one style, you like another style. This is normal. Okay, what is important here? You can always break a rule in style, in the style, but you should have reason why you are breaking it. Normally what happens, a student initially learns the skill of writing with the supervisor. You write something, the supervisor reads, corrects it, goes back. Then you know what are your common mistakes, slowly, slowly. Then you correct them, then go further. You keep going down this line, okay? And please note, when a reviewer reads the paper, he or she has the concept of what is called skepticism. So they have some doubt initially to look for. They trust you, but they have doubt. They are looking for what is that you are going to tell us. Is what you are telling is right? Is it relevant? Are you just making up an experiment which has nothing to do your actual, with your idea? and you are publishing. How you are going to prove yourself? They are going to look at it from a perspective of some skepticism in mind. And this completes this chapter. Okay, with regard to chapter 2, here in this chapter, what is discussed is about getting started. How do you start your research? Okay, so science is not just about knowledge. It's not just like, okay, I collect a lot of information and keep going, right? It's not just like that. What is science is about, you have to think as well. So there are as many scientific methods as there are individual scientists. This is very important. Why? Some of us think, oh, I have an idea. If somebody takes this idea, then he will publish and I cannot publish. I should hide my idea. This is what people think. In reality, it is this. You have an idea. But to solve that idea, but to use this idea, you have many methods. And here, the author is saying, Percy Bidgeman, he is saying like this. He is saying, the number of scientific methods you have is as many as the number of scientists you have. 
So no problem. If you take one approach, if somebody else uses one method, you use another one. So your idea is not stolen. It's not going to be dead there. Okay. So how do I start a research? To start a research, I can talk to a colleague. I can attend some seminar. I can attend some courses where they discuss this. So you come up with some aims. Then you come up with some theory, some experiments. Finally, there will be an outcome. Right? This is how a research goes. Very important is to find the question of your research, the research question. And remember, it should be precise, very clear. How to get it? To do this, I have to do what is called critical review of literature review. I should go through the literature carefully, in detail. Critically, I should analyze that. After I get into this, I get information from the research. Okay? Then I will go for some theory, then experiment, then analyze it. Please note, it is very important to work with an advisor carefully. When you start research for the first time, you won't get the whole picture. You have to go through the research twice, thrice, few number of times before you will know, okay, how to come up with an idea, how to find the problem, how to, what are the methods to solve, how to solve it, how to get results, how to write papers, okay, how to write proposals. All this will come by experience. It needs time. Experimentation is not just software development. It's not like, okay, I go and write some software, I develop a software for a mobile application and say, okay, this is my experiment. No. Software development, it is interesting, it is important, yes, but it is different than experimentation. Experimentation, we are looking at something in mind. We are going to test something. This is our main thing. And writing a paper is not like writing some user manual. Right? And learning research, to do research, is not like taking a coursework. It's not like just going and take a course. Single course in the bachelor, master degree level. And please note, publication is not the end of research. It is like an ongoing collaborative enterprise. What do you mean by collaborative here? I do something. I publish, people take it from there, publish something else. So let us start. How do you start your research? You start by some insights. You think something. Maybe you attended a lecture, you attended some seminar, you discuss with somebody while having a cup of coffee or a tea. You get some idea. And next question, is this idea workable or unworkable? Is it something possible to be implemented or not? And is this idea something novel? Is this idea as a scope or not? These two, very important. Is it novel? Is it scopeful? Because if the scope is too wide, you will not be able to finish it within your duration available. Okay? So, you don't know whether the scope is enough for a master degree or is it a PhD scope. This is not clear initially. Some students, they have some picture of what they want to do. Others, they look for topic and the supervisor. Some, they will go and talk to different people, get some different idea, and then they choose, okay? And then it is their interest, nothing wrong here. So, how do you shape your research project? There are some questions we raised before, we will get answers shortly. You have, you should have some short-term goals, okay? Milestones, where you have, okay, I will publish my first conference paper, or this and that. Your long-term goal is the thesis. There are two basic questions you, you have to answer when you do your research. First question, what is the broad problem which you are trying to investigate? And then, number two, what is that you have to do to do the job? What are the activities I have to follow? What are the methods I have to follow? Okay? What is the step I have to follow to come to what is expected in this research? So, you can come up with some idea. Very big problem, looks very interesting, but unfortunately, it may be something hypothetical. What do you mean by hypothetical? I have a very good idea, looks nice, but I cannot evaluate it. I cannot prove at the end, okay, this is solvable by this, 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 or these are the problems here. I cannot prove it. So this is called hypothetical problem. So how do I choose a topic? How do I choose an advisor? 
very importantly, you have to look for a few points. Some people look like this. Oh, this is very interesting topic. It's very interesting. Let's take this. Please keep in mind, the topic might be interesting right now, but after you graduate, by the time of your graduation, the topic might not be an interesting one. Might not be in the trends even. Possible. Okay? So, the question is, is the topic going to be relevant consistently? It can change. It might be interesting today. Then it might not be interesting in the future. Number two. Okay, so you just don't look at the first line and then make an answer. Don't look at like, okay, this is very interesting. I'm going into this topic. I'm going to work on this topic. No. Number two. Is the advisor suitable for you or not? Is, it, is he or she the right person for you or not? Some people are very good in their research, but they are not maybe good advisors for you. Okay? It has to work together. Remember, in any research, student does a lot of work. Okay? Most of the work, most of the effort is done by the student. But when it comes to intellectual stuff, both the supervisor and the student, advisor and the student, share the intellectual stuff. So, if the advisor is not intellectually sound in that area, in that specific area, he or she cannot guide you, cannot give you information. Okay? So, again, you have to look for some more things. When you have a topic, when you have an idea to choose, look whether you have sufficient skills that need, that is needed for that research. For example, maybe there is some system skills, some programming skills, some mathematical skills. There are some prerequisites needed. Okay? And another thing, do you have enough expertise in the area? Not about the student, maybe the supervisor or somebody else in the department or around to whom you can contact, you can ask your questions. Do they have enough code base experience? Meaning, do they have some experimentation experiment in the area or they are just at the talking level? at the theory level. Okay? You have to know that. And is the field mature? If the field is mature, then there will be a lot of background, so you need to leave a lot of papers. And most questions, most problems you think in that area has already been answered. Okay? It has been done already. So it is not easy to find out a problem that you can solve in a mature research area. And when you do research, don't expect to have major breakthrough. Major breakthrough like getting a Nobel Prize or something, Turing Award, these are very rare stuff. Research is incremental. Okay? You do some increment. And this increment will be taken by somebody to increment further. So at the end, from step one, from person one to person N, you'll have good increments. If you see how much it is increased from one to the tenth person, for example. But the amount of increment you are providing should be wider. The magnitude should be wider. Okay? So, you don't make a very trivial step, very small change. For example, if you are doing a network area and you are going to save the bandwidth by a couple of bits, a couple, one bit, two bits, nothing. It doesn't make sense. It is not a good increment. Okay? It's not something serious. Also, when you take any area, please note, you can take an area, you can take a problem, you can solve it from different backgrounds, different skills. This is why I'm saying, even if you have an idea, if you share with somebody, it's nothing wrong. If I share a position paper, does that mean my idea is gone? No. Why? You can take an area and you can work on different things. For example, here are some different ways of looking at a single problem. If you take things related to web, okay, web, you can take, you can do research on the statistical side. So you can decide. You make some query, you get some results of the query, answer of the query. We can check whether the results we are getting are good or not, statistically. Okay? Then you can do mathematical analysis as well. Okay, you can look, it, look at it from the perspective of mathematical stuff. So you can look whether you are having indexing. In a search engine, you have indexing, okay? Whether the indexing is appropriate, whether it is efficient, and so on. You can look at analytical, from the analytical perspective, okay? You can see whether there are some bottlenecks around. 
and you can look at it from an algorithmic perspective. You can say, okay, there is some indexing approach, let's come up with a new approach. Possible. Representational approach. You have data, you want to index them, you want to store them. You can store it in different formats. You can come up with different representation for image, video, audio, whatsoever. And then you can look at, look uh, from the perspective of behavior. When people look at it, when you people access your uh, like usability, how friendly is your interface, like HCI, human computer interaction stuff. You can also look from social perspective, which normally we computer science people or IT people don't look at it from that direction, but it's possible, okay? So one problem can be looked from different perspectives. What is important, you take a smallest question, not a very broad question, a narrow, small, straightforward question, try to solve it, okay? Something that is workable. You have to work and you have to get results out of it. The, the difference between a project and research is this. Please note, this is very important. Project, you have something to do for your company. You develop a software. This is software development, right? You come up with a solution. That's it. They say, okay, it is working. I do this. This is what I want. It is doing the job. Done. But if you talk about research, you actually have to measure the quality of the solution. You have to evaluate it. Is it quick? Is it faster? Does it have any, any security issue? There are many aspects. Accuracy, precision, recall. There are many things you look for. So let's talk about planning your research. Every course has some deadlines. You have exams, you have assignments, homework. So there are deadlines. But in research, there's only one deadline, completion. At the end, you want to have a thesis. But if you say, okay, I have only one deadline, you start working, you will never finish. You should have what is called intermediate milestones. You should have inner small, small milestones. Maybe some kind of seminar you provide, or maybe there is some progress report you submit, or maybe you submit some conference, journal papers, and so on. So at the end, you have to understand it's a process. You have to have some deadline. To plan your research, let's start from the end to the initial part. You have a thesis, which is the final result of your research. And then for that thesis, there is a requirement. You have some papers, for example. To do a paper, you need experimentation. To do experiment, I need the diagram. I need to know what is the experiment. I need to know how to analyze them. These things are necessary. So when you want to do an experiment, you have to know how to conduct the experiment. What is my hypothesis? What is the simulation environment? What is the experiment I am going to do? How I get the data for it? If I am going to have something without experimentation, am I going to have some qualitative study, like case study? How am I going to get this data? How am I going to analyze it? Okay, these things are important. So please note what evidence must we collect to convince a skeptical reader, somebody is going to read thinking that you have made some mistakes. Unless you convince him, okay, this is my hypothesis, this is what I want to achieve, I do this experiment, look, the experiment exactly matches what I want to check, and I've got these results. Until then, he will not accept your experiment, okay? Reviewer, reader will not accept. So in research, you have literature, you have design, analysis or implementation, tests are evaluated, finally you write up. Please note these things are not like you finish one, you go to the next one. No. These overlap with one another. Okay? And if you plan to finish something in one month, research normally takes longer than what you plan. Normally it takes this. So be prepared. And at the end, how I decide the amount of work I have done is sufficient or not? Generally, what you should do, during your research period, you should start writing parts of your thesis. You do literature review, right? You start writing the literature review chapter. Whenever you do something, start writing your thesis. At one point, have a glance of your thesis. It's not a complete thesis. It is a partially written thesis. Have a glance. At that time, you will know, okay, whether you have done sufficient amount of work or not. 
and always be prepared to, to adjust your timeline, your time plan. Why? Because in research you will have bottlenecks. Right? You have bottlenecks. You want to write something, you are stuck with some experiment, the results are not coming. These are normal. Okay? These things can happen in research. So, you might be flexible or you need to be flexible in your timeline. How about students and advisors? Some students have this situation, but it is rare, it's not always. They meet the advisor to choose a topic and then they meet him or her when they want to submit their final thesis. This is not good, but it is very rare. Hopefully it is not something that happens to any of us. An advisor can help you with many things. What can help you um, to, to identify research questions? Okay, can give you some activities towards publication. Okay, do this, do this, do this, so you can publish. Right? And he can help you to guide you towards a proper research question. When you want to go to a research question, maybe sometimes you get code of somebody, download their codes, or you might need to implement it fresh. You have to implement the paper as it is fresh. So, initially, when you start your research, supervisor goes with you step by step. He will help you in how to find the data, how to search literature, how to write parts of your paper, how to do experiments, all this. But once a student matures enough, he or she will become independent. He or she knows what the supervisor will ask and he will do or she will do and come to the supervisor, look, this is what I did. And supervisor will be very happy because this is what he wants to ask but the student has anticipated and done the job. There are two ways of doing research, doing it alone or in a group. They have their own impact. If you are in a group, you can always consult, you get some input from each person, okay? But if you are doing alone, then it, it's all on you, it falls on you. Please note an advisor is very important to scope your research work. You have a problem, but you don't know whether it is complicated enough or it is too much, too little, the scope, you don't know, okay? How different is your, uh, your proposed scope from what is existing in the literature? Does it have enough innovation inside? Can I succeed with it? Is there a good chance that it will be a successful research? Remember, when you start research, you don't know what is the outcome. You are not sure of the outcome, okay? You are only predicting. So the point is whether there is good likelihood of success or not. This the supervisor can tell you by his or her experience. And always, you have to have a research which is close to the advisor's expertise. Why? If it is not close to his or her expertise, they cannot tell you whether something is novel or not because they don't know that area. How can they tell you? Right? So, in fact, the advisor helps you find a topic that is interesting does not mean, okay, a fact that an advisor finds a topic interesting does not by itself, itself justify asking a student to work on it. Look, I as an advisor, I found a topic, interesting topic. That does not mean students should start working independently on it. No. Supervisor should also have sufficient expertise in that area. Okay. Students can do the experiment, get some results, get some questions. Whenever you meet a supervisor, don't go blind. Have a list of questions, list of some outcome, some results, whatever. Bring it to him or her, ask them directly, okay? Ask questions so they can help you around. To be a successful research student, initially you should read widely and broadly, not just specific to the area, so that you know what is happening around generally, okay? And be enthusiastic to read. Be ready to go for a detailed study, grueling. It's tough, I know, but you have to. So. You have to take your own responsibility, be organized, systematic. You go like step by step, read only good quality papers, high standard papers, work on the shortcomings or the limitations or the gaps in the literature, provide your arguments which are reasonable to the reader, to anybody, it should be reasonable. Don't just make up an argument, okay? You should be able to prove. And please note, in any research, failure is very common. You publish something. You submit a paper, the paper gets rejected. It's okay. This is normal. Don't take it as a failure. It is something like a building block to success. You go next step. You know what is a, they should give you proper comments. If you submit your good conference or a good journal, 
They cannot just reject. They will say, okay, we look for this, these are the shortcomings. So they are like helping you with information what you have to do. So at the end, here is a checklist. Here are some few questions we're backing from the book. Okay, let's quickly go over and we'll finish this chapter. Is your topic clear? Is it clear? The aims and purpose are clear? How your research is different from any software development or any other data analysis? Okay, and what is the area? What is the topic? What is the research question? Are these clear to you or not? Is the research appropriate to your degree, master or PhD, whatever? Is it narrow enough that you can achieve it? You can do it in the time frame given to you. Is it different than what others have been doing? And is the anticipated outcomes are good enough or important that you can go and work in this area? And is it clear what is your contribution and what is the contribution of the advisor in this research? And what are the resources you need to do this research to accomplish this research? Do you have them or can you obtain them? What are the major hurdles, obstacles you think that can happen in this research? Do you have some way, do you know how to handle them? And can you come up with a roadmap with clear path? Okay, I'll do this, I'll do this. If something happens, I have this, I have this, and so on and so forth. And you should have a scheduled set of meetings with your supervisor and a working plan which you have agreed with you and your supervisor, between you and your supervisor. Uh, this is the second chapter. It gives you insight into what is getting started, how you start your research, how you identify topics, how you work with your supervisor. I hope this helps you and we'll stop at this point of time on this chapter.